sisters. Good day to you, partner. I'm Dean, and I can already tell that I'll be your best friend in this forsaken camp. Hey guys, Weed Solo here, aka the Skeleton King. So, this is Landis 3 from a couple weeks ago, uh, playing the Poison build. I believe a pretty similar one to when he hit his sub for Pandemonium Citadel. Uh, this is a sub 6 ROB, or pretty close to 6 minutes. And uh, the reason I want to talk about it is because it's a couple of things about bone armor that are really important and take a little longer to talk about than just the little clip I gave it last time at the end of my Budget Poison Nova spree. Uh, and by the way, I've still been playing Budget Poison Nova. I'm finally about to switch to skeletons again, um, thanks to some gifts I received. And I'm going to make a video in honor of him, and it'll be a lot of fun because I'm going to be playing some builds the old school Skeleton King build, or um, kind of something like that. So I'm kind of excited about that. The first thing I wanted to talk about in the video is Landis 3 has finally figured out how to route ROB. You just take one direction, either all right or all left, and then you go back and do the same. Because when you're going backwards, your right is now the different side, or your left is now the different side. There is one issue though. You should not, if there's any area where you crisscross, which there are quite a few in this map, um, there's basically like four junctions. You actually don't have to kill every enemy there. Um, that's not super important because with the kind of damage poison does, it's very rare there's going to be a minion who lives, especially without a life mod. Uh, but as you can see, corpulents are a little tough. So like the champ corpulents, I think, are surviving his poison nova still. So what you can do is if you're going through a crisscross area, like right there above, is you don't have to actually kill every enemy. And the most important thing that matters with is the mini boss. Now, what you should do for the mini boss is throw a few poison novas down, throw a few desecrates down, and then just move on. Why? Because you can let the, basically you get a couple of free poison ticks. That's the reason. It'll save maybe one cast later on. And by one cast, I mean like two seconds of poison damage, which, you know, when you're trying to go for a speed clear, uh, two seconds is not nothing. Uh, besides that, the map has actually really good mods. It's only 200 density, but it has um, players have increased velocity, um, players have increased attack and cast speed. And so it's a really, really nice map. And it also has ghosts. And ghosts are like, either ghosts or fetishes are the best guest mobs. Um, I think it depends on the build, but I think I generally would rather see ghosts as poison. Um, they have like really small hitboxes, they stack on top of each other, they'll always all get poisoned. It uh, looks like he's handling the boss room pretty well, clearing the sides, making sure the boss continues to take some damage. Now, if you're doing this, you can die from the cold nova. Um, so basically what you do to not die from it is just make sure you get far enough away. Or make sure you just don't hit two. You probably won't die if you get hit by two, but that might be testing the waters a little bit. So how does Bone Armor work? Because that was kind of the reason I wanted to talk over this video. is because he's only got 1,100 health, which means I think he's not running any extra points into Vitality. Um, I think he's full max energy on this video right here, which means his Bone Armor is probably absorbing in the 2000s, if not higher than that. You can probably see the number in the bottom of the screen. I wouldn't be surprised if it's like 2,500. That's a lot of extra health. <laughs> I mean, Bone Armor went from something I thought was useful to just one of the greatest abilities in the game. And why is it so good now that it absorbs more? Okay, so Cyclone Armor is better than Bone Armor in vanilla LOD. No one would ever argue that. Bone Armor is trash. Bone Armor was kind of trash in PD2. It just had a few uses. It was nice to avoid frame recovery. It was nice for D-Clone. Probably still useful enough in a PvP situation. When we're talking about getting bone armor in the 2000 plus range by going max energy with one hard point, 
the reason it becomes so valuable is bone armor absorbs damage before any PDR is taken into account. And you'd go, we solo, that's a bad thing. That's why bone armor sucks. No, it's a good thing. You see that curse over his head? It's called amp damage or decrepify. Either one, both lower his physical resistances. Well, guess what? If his bone armor absorbs all the damage, then the curse does nothing. So actually, it makes the Necro tankier while cursed. Now, enemies hit for a little bit, but they don't hit for that much. Now, why is it better than Cyclone Armor when absorbing a lot? Well, Cyclone Armor, it absorbs damage before resistances. That's actually really bad for Ellie because usually you're at 75 or higher. So if you're a Necromancer and you're running max Bone Armor energy and you get like 80 plus to all your resistances, you basically turn into a tank that never takes frame recovery and never takes damage. Just as long as you keep casting Bone Armor. And that's why Bone Armor is now the best defensive ability in the game. Maybe it's even better than Energy Shield now, but I'd probably have to double check that with some Sorks because I don't play that class. I mean, if anybody does, I don't like them. All right, guys. Skelly King out. GG. Play with us, Danny. Forever.